Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on electrical safety part 2, measures to improve electrical safety. Use appropriate and well-maintained equipment at all times. Medical equipments are generally of high specification with an identifier to show the grade of protection that it offers. Ensure all medical equipment used in theatres complies with the British Standard 5724 and International Electrotechnical Committee IEC 60601-1. A single fault condition occurs when a single means of protection against hazard in equipment is defective or a single external abnormal condition is present, such as short circuit between the live parts and the applied part. Classification of Medical Electrical Equipment according to IEC 60601 Class 1 These equipments only offer basic protection. The live, neutral and earth wires do not contact each other. Any conducting part that the user can access is connected to earth and insulated from the main supply. The device casing is earth or grounded via the mains plug. A fault can be due to deteriorating insulation or short circuit. Tiny non-fault leakage currents are always present. Insulation is never perfect. And a faultless earth connection is required to protect the user. If a fault occurs and the casing becomes live, current will preferentially flow to earth via the earth wire rather than through the person touching the device. As earth provides a lower resistance pathway for current flowing, back to the substation. Fuses melt due to the resulting current surge and breaks the circuit. Fuses are located on the live and neutral supply in the equipment and the live wire in the mains plug. If earth leakage circuit breakers are present, they will cut off the electrical supply to faulty equipment in the presence of current leakage, thus interrupting faulty circuits. A person touching a faulty earth device may still be electrocuted if they are in contact with another earth object with lower impedance. This occurs because a greater proportion of current flows via the lower resistance path. Class 2 equipment possesses reinforced or double insulation that protects all parts that are accessible. Double insulation prevents the casing becoming live in a single fault, removing the need for an earth wire. There is no need for an earth connection the power cable has only live and neutral conductors and only one fuse. If water or saline should get inside the unit, the double insulation is bypassed, resulting in an electrical hazard. The electrical hazard is even more serious if the OR has no isolated power or earth leakage circuit breakers. Class 3 equipments are equipments that uses safety extra low voltage of 24 volts or less for AC or 50 volts DC provided through either a transformer or an internal battery. Although microshock is avoided by low voltage, microshock is still possible. The power input port has a special design to prevent accidental connection with another cable. Further subclassification of devices according to their degree of safety and usage limitations. Type B may be class 1, 2 or 3. These equipments have low leakage currents. Leakage currents can occur even when a fault is absent, as no insulation is perfect. Leakage currents can cause macro or micro shock. Type B equipments may have a patient connection, but it is not safe for direct connection to the heart. These are the symbols for type B and type B defibrillator protected equipments. Maximum allowable leakage current. Terminology. Earth refers to current flow through the earth wire to the ground. Enclosure refers to current flow from an exposed conductive part to earth, not via the dedicated earth wire, but via another route. Patient refers to current flow through a patient connected to the device. Maximum allowable leakage current at normal conditions. Earth 0.5, enclosure 0.1, patient 0.1 mA. During a single fault, Maximum allowable leakage current for earth is 1.0 MA, enclosure 0.5 MA, for patient 0.5 MA. Type BF or body floating. These equipments have low leakage currents as type B, 
and may have a patient connection, but is not safe for direct connection to the heart. These equipments incorporate a floating circuit, so it is safer, also known as isolated floating connection. The equipment that is applied to the patient is isolated from all its other parts. These are the symbols for type BF and type BF defibrillator protected. Maximum allowable leakage current under normal conditions, earth 0.5 MA, enclosure 0.1 MA, patient 0.1 MA. During a single fault, maximum allowable leakage current for earth is 1 MA, enclosure 0.5 MA, for patient 0.5 MA. Type CF or cardiac floating. These are equipments that are considered safe for direct connection to the heart. They have an isolated floating connection with low leakage current, may be either class 1 or 2. They are powered by mains with an internal electrical power source. Leakage currents are extremely low. 0.05 MA per electrode for class 1 CF and 0.01 MA per electrode for class 2 CF. There is no risk for electrocution by leakage currents. These are the symbols for type CF and type CF defibrillator protected. These equipments are used in ECG leads, pressure transducers and thermal dilution computers. Maximum allowable leakage current during normal conditions, earth 0.5 MA, enclosure 0.1 MA, patient 0.01 MA. During single fault, earth 1 MA, enclosure 0.5 MA, patient 0.05 MA. These are other important symbols. The danger symbol. No standardized symbol for the hazard exists. High voltage and risk of electrocution symbol. This symbol is for protective earth. The equipment has its own earth connection. This is provided by the green and yellow lead in the conventional 3-pin plug. The external case of the equipment is connected to the earth lead and reduces its potential to zero. Protection against electrocution for the user is not guaranteed. This is the symbol for functional earth, which forms a part of the main circuit which is needed for proper functioning of electrical equipment. All conventional electrical circuits have a functional earth. Electrical current is returned via the neutral wire to the substation to the earth. This is not a safety feature and may denote protective earth in older equipment. This is the symbol for additional protective earth. Protection is provided against electrical shock when there is a single fault. These are the symbols for drip proof, splash proof, and watertight. This symbol is for anesthetic proof equipment. It is the basis of the AP equipment standard. It is based on the ignition energy needed to ignite the most flammable mixture of ether and air. These equipments can be used within 5 to 25 cm of gas escaping from a breathing system at a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius or less. This symbol is anesthetic proof equipment category G. It is the basis of the APG equipment standard based on the ignition energy needed to ignite the most flammable mixture of ether and oxygen. These equipments can be used within 5 cm of gas escaping from a breathing system at a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius or less at an energy level of less than 1 mg. CE symbol The equipment conforms to the Council of Europe Directive 93-42-EEC concerning medical devices. We should use rebreathing systems such as circle systems and scavenging to contain combustible gases away from sparks. Operation theatre tables are designed to have a surface that is made of non-conducting materials. Use hospital-grade plugs and receptacles. Internal wirings can be visually inspected for damage. They are easily disassembled to ensure the integrity of the ground wire connection. The prong for the ground wire is longer than the hot or neutral prong, thus it is first to enter the receptacle. A green dot denotes a hospital-grade power outlet. Equipment that has been damaged or has obvious defects in the power cord must not be used until they have been properly repaired. Factors to be checked during maintenance of electrical equipment includes earth leakage and earth continuity. For earth leakage, the maximum current allowed 
is less than 0.5 MA, leakage current of devices connected to the heart should have earth leakage of less than 0.01 MA. Earth continuity. Maximum resistance allowed is less than 0.1 ohms. Electrical power cords, plugs and receptacles should be appropriately placed. Power cords can be crushed by various cuts or the anesthesia machine if placed on the floor. These cords should be located overhead or placed in an area of low traffic flow. Plug extension boxes should not be left on the floor where they can be drenched by electrolyte solutions or bodily fluids. They can be mounted on a cart or the anesthesia machine. Having electrical outlets in the ceiling or by having ceiling mounted articulated arms that contain electrical outlets reduces this risk. Measures to reduce static electricity has questionable value as flammable inhalational agents such as ether and cyclopropane are no longer used in modern operation theatres. These measures include use of anti-static shoes. They have a resistance of 75,000 to 10 mega ohms. Their high resistance prevents accumulation of static charge by allowing conduction of small charges. Use of carbon-filled rubber that conducts static charges and prevents their accumulation in tubings, reservoir bags and face masks. Maintaining humidity at more than 50% to prevent static accumulation. Use of anti-static floors. A person standing on an anti-static floor may have an impedance of more than 20,000 ohms. Use trolleys that have conducting wheels. Clean saline spills in the operation theatre. As water reduces impedance to current flow and increases the risk of macro shock. Ensure patients are not in contact with earth objects. Use of isolated or floating circuits. An isolating transformer comprising the primary and secondary coils that are insulated from each other separates the equipment that is mains powered from the patient circuit. AC from the primary earth mains supply induces current in the secondary coil. Electrical energy is transferred from the primary coil to the secondary coil via electromagnetic induction. Although the patient circuit is live, it remains earth-free. The main circuit is earth, whereas the patient's circuit is not earth, and therefore is floating. Electrical current is not allowed to flow between the electrical source and the earth. The diagram shows a device fault in a floating circuit, where the casing has become live. In this device fault, current will not flow back via the ground or earth system as the isolated circuit is physically separated from the substation electricity supply and a complete circuit is not formed. A person in contact with the line 1, the live case, will not be electrocuted as the current has no path to return to line 2 even if they are earth. Electric shock may occur if an individual completes the circuit by making contact with the live and the return line from the isolating transformer. If the person simultaneously contacts line 1 and 2, they receive a shock as the circuit is completed. A faulty piece of equipment plugged into the isolated power system does not trip the circuit breaker. This is a beneficial feature of the IPS because the faulty piece of equipment may be a life support apparatus for the patient. The isolated power system is converted to a grounded power system when this occurs. Line Isolation Monitor LIM, is used to monitor the integrity of isolated floating circuits. The LIM is set to alarm at 2 or 5 MA depending on the age and brand of the system. Small leakage currents exist due to the capacitance in AC power lines and AC operated equipment. These leakage currents partially degrade the isolated power system. When a faulty equipment is plugged into the isolated power system, it will reduce the impedance from line 1 or line 2 to the ground. This change in impedance is detected by the LIM which will sound an alarm. What to do when a LIM alarm is triggered? Check the gauge to determine if it is a true fault. If it is 2 to 5 MA, it is probable that too many pieces of electrical equipment have been plugged in. If it is more than 5 MA, most likely there is a faulty piece of equipment present in the OR. 
identify the faulty equipment, unplug each piece of equipment until the alarm ceases. The equipment that causes alarm cessation is the faulty equipment and should be repaired. For life support equipment, these should not be disconnected unless it is no longer needed. Remove the faulty equipment. For non-life support equipment, these equipment should be removed and fixed. For life support equipment, these can be safely used until it is no longer needed. However, protection of the IPS and the LIM is no longer operational. No other electrical equipment should be connected during the remainder of the case until the faulty piece of equipment can be safely removed. Of note, LIM does not protect against microshock as the microampere currents involved in microshock are far below the LIM threshold for protection. Common Earth Equipotentiality and electrical bonding is a condition where all metal work is normally at zero or near zero voltage by joining together all the metal appliances and connecting them to earth. This reduces the risk of electrocution by maintaining electrical devices and conducting surfaces such as exposed water pipes at the same potential by linking them to a common earth connection at the mains. When fault occurs, all metal work will thus increase to the same potential. If the patient forms part of the circuit, leakage currents from voltage differences between multiple pieces of medical equipment may flow from the higher to the lower potential via the patient. If the equipment is connected to a common equipotential earth point via a single cable, current flow through the patient is minimized. No shock occurs when two such metal appliances are contacted simultaneously as no current flow occurs as they both are at the same potential. Functions of equipment ground wires. They provide a low resistance path for fault currents to reduce the risk of microshock. They protect the electrically susceptible patient from microshock by dissipating leakage currents. Equipment ground wire provides a low impedance path to allow the majority of leakage current to flow. They provide information to the LIM on the status of the ungrounded power system. Risk of a broken equipment ground wire. There will be less protection for micro and macro shock. LIM is unable to detect broken equipment ground wires, thus the IPS will appear safer than it actually is. Earth leakage circuit breakers. In simplistic terms, each consists of a tripping coil which, when activated by excessive current, trips a relay which interrupts the supply. This consists of a transformer with a core that has an equal number of windings around it of a live wire and a neutral wire. A third winding connects the transformer with the coil of a relay. The relay operates the circuit breaker. Under normal conditions, as the current in the live and neutral wires are the same, the magnetic flux of each cancel themselves out. When a fault occurs, such as when there is excessive leakage current, a magnetic field is created as the current in the live and neutral wires differ. This magnetic field induces a current in the third winding and the relay breaks the circuit. ELCBs cut off the electrical supply to faulty equipment in the presence of current leakage, thus interrupting faulty circuits. ELCBs are very sensitive and only a very small current 5 to 30 MA is needed to trip the ELCB. When triggered, ELCBs open the circuit in a few milliseconds, thus interrupting the current flow before a significant shock occurs. ELCBs can be reset and reused unlike fuses, which requires replacement. Disadvantages of ELCBs They do not protect against short circuit or overloading. Appropriate fuses are still required. There will be loss of power to medical devices when ELCBs are activated, some of which may be essential for life support. Interruption of power is sudden and without warning. Inability to continue using the defective device after ELCBs are activated. The device may be essential for life support. If that same faulty piece of equipment were plugged into an IPS, the LIM will alarm, but the equipment could still be used. Risk of power loss to multiple medical devices, some of which may be essential for life support. This can occur when one ELCB protects multiple outlets 
and a faulty equipment trips the ELCB. Therefore, in the operation theatre, each ELCB should only protect one electrical outlet and should not be daisy chained. What to do when an ELCB is triggered in the operation theatre? First, attempt to reset it by pushing the reset button. A search may have caused the ELCB to trip. If the ELCB cannot be reset, the faulty equipment must be identified and removed from service and checked by the biomedical engineering staff. Measures to reduce the risk of microshock Use equipments with an intact ground wire. Use earth-free isolated power systems. Use patient monitors that electrically isolates all direct patient connections from the power supply of the monitor by placing a very high impedance between the patient and any device. Personnel should wear gloves whenever handling a central catheter or pacing wires. Personnel should never simultaneously touch an electrical device and a saline field central catheter or external pacing wire. Never allow any external current source, such as a nerve stimulator, to come into contact with the catheter or wires. Be alert to potential sources of energy that can be transmitted to the patient. Emergency power. All healthcare facilities are required to have a source of emergency power. Emergency power is provided by one or more electrical generators. After detecting the loss of power from the utility company, electrical generators are configured to start up automatically and provide power to the facility within 10 seconds. Hospitals should test their emergency power supply systems and generators once a month under connected load for at least 30 minutes, once every 3 years for 4 continuous hours during peak usage of the system. If the generator is oversized for the application and cannot be loaded to at least 30% of its rating, it must be load banked and run for a total of 2 hours every year. Causes of power failure can be due to relay switch failure, backup electrical generator failure, construction mishaps, and natural and man-made disasters. Relay switch failure. The relay switch detects a loss of power from the electrical utility and then causes a series of events to activate the transfer of power generation to the backup system. Construction mishaps. Accidental interruption of power during hospital remodeling may be due to worker tripping a ELCB, relay failure that causes a power transfer to a non-working generator, fire in the electrical vault of the hospital, etc. Examples of disasters include hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and bombings. Anesthetists should have a contingency plan for power failures in the operation theatre. Battery-operated light sources should always be available. Overhead lights in the OR should ideally be connected to a battery-operated lighting system. Use anesthesia machines that have a backup battery. These typically last 30 to 60 minutes. Newer electronic machines may have electronic gas or vaporization system, thus are more problematic than older traditional machines. Once the battery is exhausted, only basic functions are available such as emergency oxygen. Make plans on how to continue anesthesia if power failure lasts more than 30 to 60 minutes, such as by use of TIVA or use of emergency oxygen with a conventional vaporizer to provide inhalational anesthesia. Have a supply of battery-operated monitors. Blood pressures can be taken with a manual sphygmomanometer. Ensure that the batteries of syringe pumps have adequate charge at all times. Automated drug dispensing systems may not function during power failures, and required drugs should be sourced elsewhere. Protection against electromagnetic interference Various devices emit electromagnetic interference EMI, such as cell phones, cordless telephones, walkie-talkies, wireless internet access devices, paging systems, and televisions. EMI may interfere with the function of medical devices, a patient death has been reported when a ventilator malfunction secondary to EMI. Clinically significant interference of cardiac pacemakers by cell phones occurred in 6.6% of cases by a research done by Hayes TL. Examples of interference include erroneous sensing and pacer inhibition. Interference that caused clinical symptoms occurred 
only if the telephone was directly over the pacemaker. The pacemaker reverted to normal when the cellular telephone was removed to a safe distance. In the research done by Fetter JG, cellular telephones did not interfere with the function of automated implanted cardiac defibrillators. Other examples of interference by EMI reported includes ventilator and infusion pumps that have shut down or reprogrammed, interference with ECG monitors, an electronic wheelchair that was accidentally started due to EMI. FDA recommends that cellular telephones should be kept at least 6 inches from the pacemaker. ECRI recommendations include cellular telephones must be maintained at a distance of 1 meter from medical devices, walkie-talkies be kept at a distance of 6 to 8 meters. These are my references. Thank you.